Multiplicities that aren't necessarily one, two, or three. We're going to look at multiplicities that are greater or equal to three. And we're going to be using these same rules, just given whether they're odd multiplicities or even multiplicities. Okay, so this is just further investigating polynomial functions, but looking at higher multiplicities. So let's start with the odd multiplicities. We're given a function to start off with, x minus 2 to the power of 3. So why don't we just graph that to start and see what it looks like. And then we'll compare it to the other polynomial functions that they're giving us. Now whenever you're given a scale in the drawing, so for example here we have a scale that's going from negative 50 to 50 on the y-axis. What's it incrementing by? It's going up by 10 or down by 10. And on the x-axis, we're going from negative 1 to positive 4. So if you're given a scale like this, you might as well change your window settings in your calculator to match it. So before we put anything in, let's just change our window settings. So x, I might just go negative 2 to positive 5. I'll make it a little bigger than what's there. Scale of 1. And my y min, let's make negative... I'll just go negative 60, y max 60, and the scale will be increasing or decreasing by multiples of 10. Once you have your window settings in, let's go to y equals and we'll put in that first polynomial. We have x minus 2 to the power of 3. And graph it. Okay, hopefully we all recognize that if we had an exponent of 3, that's telling us we had multiplicity 3, and going back to what we reviewed at the beginning, we would have a point of inflection. And that's what's happening here. It's concaving down underneath the x-axis, it's concaving up above the x-axis. Just so that we have an accurate graph, what would be your y-intercept for this? What do we have to put in for x? Zero. Zero. Okay, so then we get negative 2 to the power of 3. Our y-intercept is at negative 8. So let's mark that on a graph. That would be about here. What is your 0? What's your x-intercept based on the equation x minus 2 to the power of 3? Okay. From this factor, what's your x-intercept? <coughs> Two. Two. Okay, so let's mark that out as well. And then we'll just draw our graph. Oops. I went a little early. Okay, and let's label that x minus 2 to the power of 3 where we're going through x-intercept 2, y-intercept negative 8. Then we're going to see what happens as we increase the power on the, on the factor. So instead of x minus 2 to the power of 3, in y2, let's put x minus 2 to the power of 5. We're increasing by odd exponents. So just below on y2, x minus 2, to the power of 5. What do you guys notice happen? Use your words. So it got skinnier. Okay. Do you think it got taller? Yeah. How about the angle of when it's growing or when it's decreasing? Did it get steeper? steeper. Awesome. That was the word I was looking for. Okay, before we draw this, let's just look at what our y-intercept would be. Okay, x becomes 0, and we get negative 2 to the power of 5. So our y-intercept's now at negative 32. So let's mark that out. Negative 10, 20, 30, negative 32. And do we have the same x-intercept? Same factor. And we have x minus 2 to the power of 5. 
you guys have any predictions what would happen for x minus 2 to the power of 7? It'd get even steeper. You're right. And where would our y-intercept be? You guys got to help me out a bit. What is negative 2 to the power of 7? Negative 128. Okay, so that's obviously off of our graph. We can't really plot it, but if I wanted to, say, somewhere here, still going through the same x-intercept. And then just got even steeper. So as the multiplicity increases by odd numbers, the graph gets steeper. So if you want to just summarize that below. So what happens as the multiplicity of the zero increases through the odd numbers? The graph gets steeper. So, in summary, if you have 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, you will always have a point of inflection. And if you want on your graph, you can label that too, just as a reminder. Point of inflection. And the only change is that it will get steeper. For the graph x minus 2 cubed, how many factors do we actually have? How else could I write this cubed? X minus, x minus 2 times x minus 2 times x minus 2. There's three factors. How many factors here? Five, Five and seven here. So that would mean, say if I just had this as my polynomial, that's degree 7. Okay, but if I had other factors involved, my degree would be higher. Let's look at even multiplicities. So if we were to just quickly talk about even multiplicity, what's the general shape you're going to expect? Tangent. Tangent, perfect. And any predictions what's going to maybe happen as we increase the exponent? It may get steeper, maybe not, but well, let's just check it. What did you say? So compression would be when it's flattening to the x-axis. Or other way. So it would be an expansion. expansion. Okay, so we're going to put in our y1, x minus 2, all to the power of 2. For squared. Let's graph that. Okay. I wish I didn't quit this down. You guys have better window settings than me right now. I just got to reset that. So from the factor, we know our x-intercept is at positive 2. So let's mark that out. And our y-intercept will be when we replace our x with a 0. So our y-intercept will be at 0, positive 4. Keep in mind, this is scaling up by 10, so it's going to be about there. And as we talked about, if you have an exponent of 2, it's going to be tangent. Now let's see what happens as we increase the multiplicity by even numbers. So x minus 2 to the power of 4. Again, it's tangent. We're getting that parabola shape. 
but it's just a bit steeper. And how am I going to find my y-intercept? Two to the four. Yep, so I have negative two to the power of four gives me 16. So 10, 15, 16, about there. Going through the same x-intercept, just a little bit steeper. And the last one, we probably don't even need our calculator, but it is good just to graph it out. So what's our y-intercept on our last one? What's negative 2 to the power of 6? 64, thank you. So it's just a bit above our scale. So we can conclude that what happens as the multiplicity of the zero increases through the even numbers is the graph gets steeper. Okay, we always have a tangent shape, and we always have an x-intercept at 2, but the y-intercept is increasing because the graph is getting steeper. So just a little summary of even and odd multiplicities. A real zero of even multiplicities, which would be 2, 4, 6, 8, will occur when the polynomial function is tangent. Okay? And then if we have an odd multiplicity, 3, 5, 7, 9, etc., okay, we will have a point of inflection. Now, why do they not include 1 in those odd set of numbers? Exactly. Okay? We reviewed before that if the multiplicity is 1, we have a straight line. It's the only exception to this. So all odd numbers apart from 1 have a point of inflection. But if the multiplicity is 1, then you have a straight line through the x-axis. Okay, and then just a reminder that the sum of the multiplicities of the zeros is always equal to the degree. Okay, so if you add up the multiplicities, you'll get the degree of the function. So we're going to look at a few examples. We're going to state the number of zeros or x-intercepts that we see and then the possible, possible multiplicities of each zero. So it's just summarizing the shapes. So first of all, how many zeros do you guys see on this first graph? One, two. Okay, and I'm just going to put the parts right here. So you have two zeros. And for this zero, what shape are we seeing? Tangent. Tangent. If it's tangent, what's the possible multiplicity? So it can be 2, 4, 6, 8, anything even. And that's because it's tangent. Okay, now for this zero here, what kind of shape are we seeing? Point of inflection. And for point of inflection, the multiplicity will always be odd. And the possibilities could be 3, 5, 7, 9. We don't know, though. Okay, what's the multiplicity here? What's the multiplicity here? What's the multiplicity here? 2. So possibilities <coughs> for the multiplicities, if we have multiplicity, um, sorry, if it's tangent, we could have multiplicity of 2, we could have multiplicity 4, multiplicity 6, anything even. Okay? And if it's straight, it will always be multiplicity 1. That's the only possibility when it's straight. And if you want to add the descriptor for each graph, feel free. But if you know that that's tangent, you don't necessarily have to write it every time. Okay, for the two graphs below, we have a tangent and a tangent. So what are the possible multiplicities? Two, four, six, eight, anything even. 
And this one? One. Just one, because it's going straight through. Okay, on the next one, we have one, two, three zeros. Let's just describe them. This is going through straight, so we have a multiplicity of one. This is going through straight, so a multiplicity of one. And this one is going through with a point of inflection, which means we could have multiplicity three, five, seven, anything odd, basically. Now, just leaving those on the screen, there's just a few questions at the bottom here as well. So for part B, which graph could represent a polynomial function of degree 8? So we'd have to look at the potential multiplicities and figure out which ones would add to degree 8. So remember, you can add the multiplicities to get your degree. So let's figure out this one. We have two zeros. If I added, I need to get an 8, right? So say 4 plus one of these numbers, 4 plus 3 is 7, didn't work. 4 plus 5 is 9, didn't work. What's 6 plus 3? 9. I didn't get degree 8, so it can't be graph 1. What about graph 2? I have 1 plus 1, there's 2, and then I've got to add a multiplicity that shows this tangent. So could I go 1 plus 1 plus 6 and get 8? Yeah. Okay, so for part B below, graph 2 adds up to degree 8. You messing with my video? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, okay and uh, let's check out graph number three. So again, we have tangents. Let's see if we can add up. We know we have one for sure, but if we have even and even, are we going to get to an even number eight? No. So even, even, odd, we're not going to add up to get eight. You can try it. It's not going to work. Okay, and we'll try this last one. So we have an odd plus an odd plus an odd. Is that going to equal an even 8? No. We can even try it. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 5 is 7. It's not going to work. So the only graph that can get degree 8 would be the second graph here. Now, part C is asking which of the graphs has leading coefficients that are positive. So I'm just going to do a little summary. If we have even degree, that means that the arms are together, right? And if the arms are facing up, is the leading coefficient positive or negative? Positive. If it's facing down, what is it? Negative. negative. So let's see, do we have any even arms that are both facing up? No. Doesn't look like it. Okay, what about with odd degrees? Okay, are the arms together or separate? Okay, they're separate. And if we have a positive leading coefficient, you should be able to connect the arms and create a line that shows a positive slope. So let's see if we can do that here. If I drew an imaginary line, it looks like a negative slope. Okay, this we already talked about, arms are facing down, so it's a negative leading coefficient. If I were to connect this arm to that arm, does that give you a positive slope? Therefore, this would have a positive leading coefficient. So for part C, graph 3 would work. And then how about this one? The arms facing down, the arms facing up. If I were to connect them, I get a positive slope as well. So graph 3 and graph 4 have positive leading coefficients. So this next one's a little fun. We get a bunch of hints. And without using the calculator, we have to draw this graph. So before we start anything, I just want to talk about this one factor right here, x. Do you guys know what the zero would be on that, the x-intercept? So another way of writing x times x minus 1 times x minus 4, okay, the negatives out front, would to be, to make this factor look like x plus its 0, or x minus its 0. There isn't a number that's with the x, so we can imagine that the x factor could be written as x minus 0. 
So the zero or the x-intercept from the factor, just x, is the x-intercept zero. So that's one of our zeros. Okay, what's a zero from x minus one? Positive one. Okay, and the zero from x minus four? Positive four. So we have three zeros. Zero, one, and positive four. Now let's just talk about the multiplicities. On x we have an exponent of one, so that means it's multiplicity one. On x minus one, we have an exponent of four, so it's multiplicity four. And on the last factor, we have again a multiplicity of one, because the exponent's one. So let's just figure out what would be the degree of this polynomial. We're going to add the multiplicities. 1 plus 4 plus 1. That gives me 6, which is an even, which means our arms together or separate? Together. So arms together. Hey, okay, then let's talk about our leading coefficient. It's negative. So what does that tell you about the arms? They face down. Okay, and then lastly, we can just talk about what the multiplicities mean and what their shape looks like because of them. So first of all, if the arms are together and they're facing down, I might just start by drawing some arms that are down. Now we're going to talk about the multiplicities. So for the factor of x, multiplicity 1, what will be the shape? Straight. Okay. Okay, for multiplicity of 4, what will be the shape? Tangent. And multiplicity 1? Straight again. So now that we've described what it will look like going through the x-axis, we're able to draw this. So at x minus 4 to the power of 1, it's going to go straight through. Okay, at x minus 1 to the power of 4, it's going to be tangent. So we bounce off the x-axis. And then at x, it's going straight through. And we connect to your, to your arm. And if you don't trust me, you can put this into your calculator and verify with your calculator. Okay. So everything we described thing, uh, here are things that you're going to have to think about if you're asked to draw a polynomial function like this. So you want to first figure out what's your degree, whether it's odd or even, that's going to tell you how the arms will be, together or separate. Okay, and then you look at your leading coefficient if it's negative or positive. Lastly, you want to look at the multiplicities on each individual factor, and then you can go from that. So for the next example, we're going to have to figure out the polynomial, or sorry, the following graphs represent a polynomial function using the lowest multiplicities. So given that, we're going to have to state what is the degree Okay, and then we're going to have to state the points on the graph which represent real and equal roots. Do you guys remember from grade 11 what real and equal means? There, we had real and distinct, real and equal, and non-real. So real and distinct means that you have two different x-intercepts, or more than, in a, in a polynomial or a parabola, you'd only have two x-intercepts max. In this case, we might have more. But real and distinct means different x-intercepts. Real and equal means that you have the same x-intercepts. And non-real means that they don't exist. You wouldn't have x-intercepts. Okay, so in this example, would we have any x-intercepts that would hit the x-axis with maybe a multiplicity of 2? Right here? So I guess in summary, tangent Shapes, they have multiple, uh, real and equal roots. Okay, and same with point of inflections. 
Because how many times, how many factors would go through a point of inflection? Minimum. What exponent is on a point of inflection? Or mul what multiplicity? So let's say, for example, this was at like a negative 6. It'd be x plus 6 to the power of 3. So how many zeros would I have there? A, technically, it's just one, but I would have three factors with the same result. So that's considered real and equal here, three times. Okay, let's just start with the beginning, though. Let's talk about the degree. So we're supposed to use the lowest possible multiplicities, or the lowest degree possible, which means the lowest multiplicity. So if we have a tangent, what's the lowest multiplicity we can use? Two. Okay, if we have a straight, multiplicity of one, and a straight, multiplicity of one, so the degree will be two plus one plus one. Gives you four. Okay, now let's state the points that represent real and equal roots. Okay, that would be at point A. Anytime you have a tangent, you will have real and equal roots. Going to B, what is the lowest multiplicity at a point of inflection? Three. And the lowest multiplicity at a point of inflection is again three. So the degree, the lowest degree would be a multiplicity of three plus a multiplicity of three. Your lowest degree would be six. And the points that are considered real and equal are the, basically the points that have multiplicity more than one. Okay, so if you have two, three, four, five as your exponent on those zeros, or multiplicities that are two, three, four, five going up, 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 those are real and equal. So at point P and at point S, we have real and equal roots. Next one, you're given a bunch of clues, and you have to draw the graph. So the first thing I like to ask myself is, what is the degree? Let's read through the descriptions first. We have a positive leading coefficient. There's one real zero, multiplicity one. There's two real zeros, multiplicity of two. One real zero, multiplicity five. So let's do the degree first, part B. Okay, the first... Uh, hint about multiplicity, we have one zero with multiplicity one. So that's going to be one plus two real zeros have multiplicity of two, so it's two real zeros times a multiplicity of two. Or you could go two plus two. And then we have lastly one real zero with a multiplicity of five. So we're adding five. We get one plus four plus five is degree ten. If we have degree 10, which way will the arms be? Together or separate? Together. So arms together. All right, now let's look at the other hints. Positive leading coefficient. Arms together and up. So arms up. Because we have a positive leading coefficient. So we know that the arms will be up, we'll draw one here, one here, and then we just need to fill in the, the remaining criteria. So one real, real zero has a multiplicity of one. Okay, let's go straight through here. That's multiplicity one. Two real zeros have a multiplicity of two. That's tangent, that's tangent. Okay, so multiplicity two, multiplicity two. And one real zero has a multiplicity of five. Five gives me what shape? Point of inflection. Awesome. So concave down, concave up. Now, it's not to say your graph has to look like this, but I have correctly drawn all the criteria. Let's try the next one. 
So for graph 2, let's look at the degree to start. So we have two real zeros, multiplicity of 1. So that's going to be 2 times 1, plus 1 real 0, multiplicity 3. So we're adding 3, plus 1 real 0 with a multiplicity of 4. So let's add 4. So 2 plus 3 is 5, plus 4 is degree 9. So arms together or opposite? Opposite. And the leading coefficient is negative. So if arms are opposite, they need to create a negative slope like this. So one arm will be up, one arm will be down. And if you were to connect those with an imaginary line, you would get a negative slope. So let's just go through this. Two real zeros with a multiplicity of one. Well, I know I've got to go straight through to connect this arm, and i got to go to connect this arm. So it's not to say it has to go straight and straight for these arms, but I think it's going to work. Okay, so one of the zeros will be straight, multiplicity of one, and another one of the zeros is straight with multiplicity one. So we've checked that one off. One real zero has a multiplicity of three. So maybe I'll just do this one to start. Concave down, concave up, it's a multiplicity of 3. And you could reverse it. You could put the point of inflection here too. But I just chose to put it there. Okay, and then the last one, multiplicity of 4. So it's going to be tangent. And just so you guys know, you could have drawn the graph like this, where the tangent goes first, and then the point of inflection goes last. So you could have done it in the reverse order too. Now the last, last concept is talking about non-real zeros. Sometimes when you are factoring down polynomials, you will end up with trinomials that can't be factored, which means you have to use the quadratic formula to break it down further to find those x-intercepts. For example, if we looked at the fourth degree polynomial x to the power of 4 minus 5x squared plus 8x minus 12, they factored down the first little part to get x minus 2 and x plus 3, but couldn't factor that last trinomial x squared minus x plus 2. So in the case when you can't factor something, we have to use the quadratic formula. And just a reminder, that is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. From the trinomial that we couldn't factor down, it's listed here again, our a is 1, our b is negative 1, and our c is positive 2. So we just have to plug that into the quadratic formula. So negative negative 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 2 all over 2 times 1. And that breaks down to 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 7 all over 2. From here, we can break it down. There's actually two solutions right here. There's 1 minus the square root of negative 7 over 2, and there's 1 plus the square root of negative 7 over 2. Okay, because of that plus minus, there's actually two solutions. But what's the problem with this square root of negative 7? We can't take a square root of the negative. So there's two words that we use when we get a number underneath the radical that's negative. These are considered negative, or sorry, imaginary zeros or complex zeros. Okay? Although they're non-real solutions, higher level math, you would call these imaginary numbers or complex numbers. And because we're talking about zeros, we call them imaginary zeros or complex zeros. One thing that's really important to note 
is that non-real zeros always occur in pairs. Now I've kind of talked about that already, how there's a positive negative, which means there's two non-real zeros. So when we get to the graphs below, it's important to recognize that if you have an answer like this, there's actually two non-real zeros, not just one. And that's because of the positive and negative. So if you guys wanted, you could graph this. Let's put that into our y equals just to see what a non-real non zero looks like. x to the power of 4 minus 5x squared. Chris, did you get that nap you were hoping for? No. You didn't? No, not yet. It's not going to happen in math though, right? No, not yet. Okay. <laughs> um, also, just guys pay attention here. They're giving you the polynomial that we started with originally, and they're telling us window settings. So anytime you're given window settings, make sure you use them. So it'll give you the ideal graph. So we have negative 8 to 8, scale of 1. And on our y-axis, we're going from negative 40 to 20, scale of 10. So there's a piece of this question that I didn't quite talk about yet. Uh, it's going back up to A here. So using the factored form, state the two real zeros. So from this factor and this factor, what are our zeros? Two, two and negative three. That's what we're seeing here. Negative three and two. Now that trinomial that we couldn't factor, which was over there, that is still evident in this polynomial, but it's just a little bit hidden. It's right here. Would you guys say that's kind of like a point of inflection, but it's not occurring over the x-axis? Okay, that is our non-real zero right there. And I should say two non-real zeros because they always happen in pairs. So just take a moment, make sure you get that graph in your notes. Make sure you highlight where that non-real zero is. Now we're just going to look at a few examples and see if we can identify where these non-real zeros are. So taking a look at the first graph, okay, this is like this is an actual zero. It's going through the x-intercept, but there's a region right here that's changing. Like typically, you you would change to get to another x-intercept. Whenever the graph changes direction, you're going to another x-intercept. But in this case, it's changing direction and changing direction again, which means that there's a non-real zero here, a pair of non-real zeros. Okay, it's not changing direction to go back through the x-axis. It's changing direction because it had a non-real zero there. Okay, and just remember that it's a pair. There's two non-real zeros. Let's look at the next one. I think the more examples you see, the more you're going to get it. Okay, we have a zero. It's going up. It's changing direction to go through another zero. And then what's happening here? We have basically like a point of inflection, but it's not going back through the x-axis. So we have two non-real zeros there.
Okay, third one, we're going through the x-axis, we have an x-intercept. And rather than it just continuing straight, it's looking like it wanted to veer back, but then it concaves down below the x-axis. There's two non-real zeros right here. Next one, we have a tangent, x-intercept, comes up, changes direction, but it goes through to a, a real x-intercept. It goes down and back up to another x-intercept, but right here, you see how it's, it has almost like a point of inflection there as well, but it's not going through the x-axis at the point of inflection. That means it's non-real as well, so two non-real zeros. So in this one, it is a little bit trickier because it's kind of like this one too. Like you're going straight through and it changes direction to go back through an x-intercept. Same thing here. We have a tangent and it's changing direction to go back through another x-intercept. If it doesn't go through an x-intercept, like here where it's changing direction and it's just going off to infinity, it's not changing directions to go back through the x-axis, that means you have a non-real zero. Okay, so only if it's changing direction to go through the x-axis will you have another x-intercept. If it changes direction and doesn't go through the x-axis again, it's a non-real zero. And I believe that's it for this lesson.